ear infections can be of three types external ear infection which extends from the pinna to the eardrum middle ear infection which extends from the eardrum to a little chamber behind which contains the three tiniest bones of the body the ossicles okay and the inner ear infection which involves the cochlea the organ of hearing and the vestibule the organ of balance so what happens when we have external ear infections we have the movement of the ear pinna become very painful the pinna becomes red can be swollen shut so we can't see the membrane there may be pus drainage from the ear there may be deafness because it's swollen shut and there may be itching especially if there is fungus infection of the external ear and of course fungus infection is especially common in diabetics okay what happens when we have a middle ear infection middle ear infection again can manifest with a ruptured drum okay a ruptured drum and pus pouring out very common in children pain pus formation and deafness they they become hard of hearing they become deaf for that time because the three bones aren't moving well okay and now what happens when we have an inner ear infections let's go to the next slide the internal ear infection can manifest as dizziness as nausea as vomiting as vertigo and sudden hearing loss see there's the inner ear consists of the organ of sound and the organ of balance so the organ of sound is knocked out and you get a sudden hearing loss you can have dizziness nausea vomiting vertigo if the organs of balance are affected now in children the hearing loss in children is especially dangerous because as they are growing from when they are born onwards they hear sounds and learn to talk so if there is hearing lo uh, loss they may not be able to talk at all may not learn to talk now in adults external ear infection can be caused by fungus infection diabetes which causes fungus infection also the excessive use of q tips if you keep on uh, scraping your external ear canal with a q tip it predisposes to infection because the canal of the external ear canal is like the skin of our face you can't keep rubbing it all the time okay so now here are, there's a line here saying what's the importance of the eustachian tube now the eustachian tube is that tube running from the middle ear to the nose now in children their uh, their heads are are shorter this way so the eustachian tubes are more horizontal so infection can easily go from the nose into the middle ear as they reach adulthood their head elongates and the angle between the eustachian tube and the middle ear increases okay which is the reason why ear infections middle ear infections are so common in children and that is the reason why we sometimes put a little tube inside here a grommet okay to a tube to let air in and let the pus out in children we can also have have to do it in adults okay also notice that the ear is right behind what is known as the temporomandibular joint here and there and it is often seen that the temporomandibular joint can mimic an ear infection so we keep pouring uh, drops into our ear having antibiotics but the pain doesn't go because because it's a uh, pain of the temporomandibular joint the jaw joint okay which if you move your jaw from side to side and crackle and move your um jaw from side to side or up and down you can hear crackling or you can just have pain okay also pain in the ear can be referred from uh, from cancers of the throat or infection severe infection of the throat or even cancers of the throat can manifest as a referred pain to the ear so these of course have uh, discussed the causes of the pain of the ear thank you